Good morning. We made it to Friday. December 3rd. First Sunday in December. We have our children's program at church in a couple weeks. On, uh, was it the 19th, I think, so... Well, some of you are signing on here. Hope you had a good morning and enjoying the beautiful sunshine. I know it's incredibly dry and you definitely need moisture, but uh, I do enjoy the sunshine. And like that, growing up in Missouri, there were there were times where you you could go a week without seeing the sun. I mean, it's just gray and gloomy all day and. I wasn't very fond of that, so <clears throat> rather have the sunshine. So, well, we uh, getting ready to move into the weekend, and uh, love to see you out. If you're in the area, come visit us at uh, Platte Valley, and if you live elsewhere, make sure you get in a good church uh, this Sunday. And uh, um, you just, I don't know, you just find a uh, a peace and an encouragement by uh, going. That's God's plan. That's what he wants us to do. And uh, and uh, it's just, uh, it's a blessing to be a part of a group of believers that aren't perfect, that love the Lord and love each other and want to make a difference in people's lives and help each other. And, and it's a good way to... Um, well, it's a good way to exercise your faith. You know, you when we go to worship God, it's it's really it's not about us, it's about him and we want to do what what it is that he wants us to do and uh part of that is to praise him, worship him, to encourage other believers, to pray with one another, to uh fellowship and to I uh, hear from the word, and I mean, there's a lot of things going on, and we need to be active. I uh, was talking to a friend this morning, and a statement was made that in order for you to be victorious, you need to be active, and uh, it's true. I mean, you think about the armor of God. Well, the armor of God, you put that on not to, I don't know, sit in your living room. Uh, you put the armor of God on to go out and to uh, use it to serve and live for God, right? So we need to be active in our faith. And, and when we're active in our faith and doing what God wants us to do, we know that uh, God uh, puts us where we need to be and to make a difference in someone's life. So uh, we need to do that. So pray for one another and pray for those that, you know, are not feeling well and uh, some people have COVID, some have the, the the flu or, you know, the sinus junk that's going on and, and uh, just a lot of things going on. And I was encouraged today too. got a call from a guy that uh, had trusted Christ here a few months ago and uh, was just telling me he experienced uh, this morning that he was witnessing to a, a friend of his. And uh, I mean, that's how it works, right? I mean, we... Uh, we trust Christ and, and we serve him. We tell others about him. We see people trust Christ that are our friends and family. And, and, uh, we just go tell that, you know, tell others and, and God uses us. And, and it, it's really simple. You might think, well, I don't know enough. Well, you, you knew enough how to be saved, right? Well, then tell others how to be saved and how you got saved. Use your testimony and, uh, God's good at that. And so I was I was reading in Psalm 122 and just reminded me of, of the the peace that ought to bring to go to church. And uh, Psalm 122, David writes this talking about the temple. And I know temple was somewhat different than what our church is today. And I'm not going to get into all of that. But as David wrote this, as he was uh going to the temple to worship God. And it's kind of that way when we get up and go to church on Sunday or even a, a Wednesday night, sometimes you're tired, but 
This is what David said. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know, sometimes our flesh is weak and we're tired and, and uh, you'd rather just uh, sit on the couch or sit in your chair. And, and But here David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compacted together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. I mean, we let, let's let's do the same thing, and it brings us together. And well, there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for peace of Jerusalem; they shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls, and prosperity within thy palaces. And um, you know, you go and you do find a peace, right? And for my brethren and companions' sakes, I will now say, peace be within thee. I, I mean, we have it all here, you know, the, the encouragement that we get from seeing one another and encouraging one another. And, you, you know, you're out in the week and you, you're dealing with a lot of things in the world. You're dealing with a, a lot of worldly people. You're dealing with a lot of people that don't know Jesus. You're, you, you know, you're dealing with a lot of people who are down and out and it's just good to come and, and get energized because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. And it, I don't know, I just read that today and, and what a privilege it is to be a child of God today and, and to walk with him and, and see him uh, guide us and, and use us and, and giving us a, a wonderful place to come together and, and to uh, worship him. And you know, in in this day and age, the 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 challenges are here that you know that they're, they're still going to try to shut down things and shut down the the churches. And I just read this morning that yesterday or Wednesday, the New Jersey lawmakers, so the the Congress, the state Congress in New Jersey. Um, obviously is dominated by Democrats, but they have to come in and they're, you know, making bills or whatever, and you got to vote on it. And they weren't allowing uh, the lawmakers in unless they could show proof of vaccination. And if they weren't uh, uh, vaccinated, they weren't allowed to go in. And so they they went in anyway, and, and then they were threatened that they were going to get drug out. And finally, the the uh, highway patrol of New Jersey said we're not going to enforce this, and so they called the bluff and and wasn't arrested. But uh, I mean, it's amazing, right? I mean, we're we're to the point now where we have uh, have lost our even our independence on our own health and uh, deciding what's good and what's not. We have to decide now that what the government says is good for us, and if we don't you know, bow to that, then we are uh, not going to be allowed to do things. I mean, Denver's that way already. They, they, they have places now that they're requiring you to show proof of vaccine to go in. Uh, most of them are bars and I could care less. So I'm not going to go there anyway. I'm just not, I guess I'm just not going to go to Denver. I don't, uh, I don't care if I go to Denver, it's to pass through there, but I'm not, I'm not going anywhere where, they're going to do that stuff. So, and we just got to trust the Lord and, and know that he fights our battles. And I read in Psalm 24 and verse eight today, who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. And, you know, whatever our battles are and, and whatever our battles may be that are coming, we need to understand that the Lord is mighty. And, and and mighty in battle, and strong and mighty, and and how, how we need to uh, stand and, and walk and, and know that he's got things under control, and and it's going to be okay, and, and how, how we need to trust him, and walk with him, and live our lives the way that he tells us to live our lives, and it's not some government's right to do so, and the, it's ridiculous to, to think that a bunch of unsaved people uh, are are going to tell us as believers how to live. And yeah, Todd, I, I, I read that article you posted today. And, and you know, when, when are people going to wake up 
and realize that people like Joel Osteen are a joke. I mean, they're, they are, they're, there is nothing godly about them. There, there is, he's as, he's as evil as the demons. And, and these characters, they follow these people like they're God, you know? I mean, it's like the, it's like the Pope comes out and, and, and tells Crete that they need to open up their borders and let more immigrants in there. And, and why don't you, you know, th this guy walking around in his fancy little robe and people treating him like God and telling the whole world that they need to open up to immigrants and chewing on the America for doing that. Why don't you open the Vatican up? Yeah, putz. You know, what a hypocrite. Guy wakes up every day and thinks that he's treated like he's perfect and that he can rewrite the word of God. Give me a break. He's not God. He's just like us. He has a sin nature just like us. And until he humbles himself and calls on Jesus to be his savior, he's going to burn in hell one day. And people like Osteen and the Pope, biggest hypocrites in the country, in the world. And, and you know, one day they'll, they'll pay the price. And uh, we just need to walk humbly with God and, and trust him and and when we do things that are wrong, we confess it to God. We confess it to God. You hear me? We confess it to God. We don't confess it to some man for forgiveness. We confess it to God and trust God to, to do what he says. If we know Jesus is our savior, he'll help us. And, and that, that's how we walk humbly with God. And so let's walk humbly with God. And, and he says, surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly and how we need to walk humbly with God and, and know that, yeah, there are days when, when uh, we, we need to, to get things right. And so let's get things right. And, and, but uh, he, he'll scorn the scorners. I mean, I, uh, he, he wins the battle. And so let's walk with him and, and trust him and, and let him do what, do what, uh, he needs to do in, in our lives and, and uh, find the peace that, that God gives us. And, and uh, you'll, you'll see God uh, doing that. And then I, I was reading in Daniel chapter 11, and uh, along with this, knowing you just let God fight the battle, right? And we, we walk with God, we stand up for what's right, we stand up for what's scriptural, what's biblical, and and, and we fight against the evil, you know, it's just like I said earlier, you know, within our discussion earlier this morning with a friend that you, you put on the armor of God and the armor of God means that you put it on, you walk outside and you do something with it and you, and you, you walk into the darkness of this world and make a difference in this world. And, and, um, and you're always going to deal with those that that are going to try you, that are the scorners, that are the ones that beat their chest. And, and that's what he says here in Daniel chapter 11. It says, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. You know, we have all kinds of people doing that. We have, we have, you know, the bureaucrats, we have the politicians, we have people in this world, we have people down the street, you know, wherever you live, that beating their chest and making themselves out to be great and, and regard nothing but themselves as a God. And, and they're going to magnify themselves above all. Well, I, I just got news for you. We, we need to walk humbly because this is what he says in verse 45, a little bit later. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. That's this same character that shall magnify himself above all. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. Now, scary thought, be left alone. But that's exactly where they're going to go. And, and they're going to come to the point where God is going to be done with them and he's going to remove them from wherever they are and the, the ones that, that live, the ones that receive blessings are the ones that have humbled their hearts, walking with the Lord, trusting him as their savior, being obedient to him, and, and, and just living their lives like God's told them and commanded them to do. And, and in the midst of all of this, so here, listen to what he said again, and yet he shall come to his end 
and none shall help him. Well, I'm probably going to preach on this Sunday morning, but look what Psalm 121 says. I will lift up my eyes, mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Just the opposite. You, you see, we can, we can walk around in this world that, that seems to be defeated by wickedness and evil and, and the pressure and, and all the craziness that's going on. And, and look, Daniel did too. You know, Daniel was living in a time when, when all these crazy kings, I mean, they were crazy in, you know, in their gluttony of power. And uh, I mean, the, the, the king's mind was so distorted by their power and the lust for greed and, and, and control of people and just much like what we have here. And you know what you see? I mean, in the time Daniel was there, in, in the 70 years, 80 years that he lived, I mean, this guy went through, what, four kings? Four, four, four different, uh, uh, actually, he had Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar that were the Assyrians. We had the Medes and the Persians, uh, Belshazzar, or no, I, I can't remember. So like four kings and a couple of different nations, but uh, I think he was four different kings set themselves up and... and Three different nations. I think Cyrus was a different, I can't remember now. I'd have to go back and study it out more, but sorry about that. But uh, still, they come and go. And, and these people that lust for power will come and go because there comes a point where they have no help. And But we do. And, and the remnant will always be there. And so let's continue to trust him and let's continue to, to walk with him. Let's continue to be obedient to him and know that, that he's got things taken care of. And, and then the last thing that I have is in 1 John. And 1 John is powerful in just telling us how, how we ought to be living in this world and, and the things that we ought to be doing. And, and, and first of all, remember the privilege it is to be a child of God. Look, if you know him as your Savior, then, then always rest in that and, and be encouraged by that. In 1 John 3, it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Do you, do you realize the privilege that, that, we have, uh, that we have in being called the sons of God? Rand, that's powerful. Read, read the gospel of John and then, and then go to the back of the Bible there and, and read the epistles of John, first, second, and third John. And all of them go together and what what a what a privilege it is to be called the sons of God. We we have whence cometh my help? You know, I, I look upon the hills. Whence cometh my help? It comes from the Lord, and 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 we have such a privilege in knowing that He can lift us up. You remember, He's the lifter of our head, and and He's the one. And therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew Him not. Don't don't expect the world to know. Uh, anything about God and, and who he is. We, we know who he is and we, we, we know him through our savior. We know him through the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. We, we know him through the, the revealing of him through his word and, and how powerful this word is. And, and, and uh, beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And boy, there is a day coming when we will be like him and we'll have his body and, and we'll have that mind and, and we'll be in eternity. And, and so because of this, he says, verse three, and every man that hath this hope in him, and that hope is a certainty that we have, okay? Don't, don't live your life uncertain of whether you have eternal life. Make certain of it. Look, Call upon Jesus to be your Savior, trusting him, and you will see that he will save you, and he will be your Savior, and he will promise you uh, uh, e eternal life. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. So walk purely with him. And how do you do that? By confessing sin, by quickly dealing with it in your life, and getting it out of your life, getting it out of your mind and, and 
walking with God transparently today and, and trusting him and, and seeing that he will deliver you from whatever the issues are. And, and so you you purify yourself. And, and then he goes on and, and he talks about committing sin. And, and this, is a, this is a lifestyle, okay? We, we will always commit sin. There, there, is, there is no such thing as sinless perfection here on this earth. You're not gonna make it, okay? You, you still have that sin nature that you have to fight with. And, and those that wanna teach sinless perfection, all you do is you, you end up um, bringing people to a point where, where they give up because they can't do it. I mean, it's never been possible other than Jesus himself living sinlessly. The rest of us all have sin, are sinning, and will continue to sin. So, but the, those that their lives are reeking with sin and, and there's never any kind of victory and there's never any desire to, to please God and all they do is just live their life as the rest of the world and live like the rest of the world and act like the rest of the world and, and there's never anything different in their lives, in their hearts, in their minds, well, then if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it is a duck. And same thing with a, with a non-believer. But as a believer, we, we are going to have victory in our lives and we are going to do battle with sin. That's why you put on that armor of God. You do battle with it daily. And, and, and then he goes on and, and uh, uh, he tells us that all the way through verse 17. And then verse 18, this is what he says. He says, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. I mean, we, we have to do more than just say it. We have to be living it. And, and we have to be living it in this crazy world right now the wickedness of it. And people mock your faith. People are going to mock your 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 obstinacy to, to do what God wants you to do, not what everybody else wants you to do. And um, that's getting greater and greater. The the mob is going to be telling you how you ought to live your life. And and we we don't have to do that. Daniel didn't do that. The the disciples didn't do that, nor should we. And so we're going to live our lives the way God tells us to live our lives. And nothing stops us from doing that. And when they do stop us from doing that, we just keep doing what we're supposed to do. And the world is a bully. And Satan is a bully. And, and there's nothing good about the devil whatsoever. And, and we just need to live the way that God wants us to live. And, and here's the assurance. Look, if, if we live the way that we're supposed to, God also gives us assurance of our salvation. When you as a believer start turning your back and start heading back into the world and getting worldly ideas, you know the first thing that happens is you start questioning whether you're a child of God or not. Well, it's because you're disobedient. Now, some people are convicted about not being a child of God because they're not. And you need to you need to be... Uh, transparent with God and, and make certain of that. But if you know for certain you're a child of God, but you're you're living worldly and, and then you start questioning your salvation, well, there, there's a reason for that. You, you got sin in your life and it's hindering the fellowship that you need with him and you need to get it right. Because here it says, and hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. And so because you are loving in deed and in truth. And when you're practicing those things, and it's not just something you're saying, but it's something that you're living, God assures us that we're a child of God. And then there are even times when your heart still may try to condemn you. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Take it to God. He's the one that knows our hearts. He's the only one that knows our hearts. No one else does not even us. We start following our heart and we're a fool. That's what it says in Proverbs 28. So let's follow the Lord and then let him inspect our hearts. And, and he will show us and guide us. And, and, uh, and, and then we just need to continue to live for him. When we do that, the Holy Spirit encourages us, lets us know we're a child of God and that uh, everything's gonna be okay. And even in the midst of some crazy chaos and 
this the the craziness that we see here in our in our country in this state uh it's okay what we just keep doing what we're supposed to do and let's live for him and trust him and walk by faith that he's got all things under control so those are the thoughts for friday and uh if you can love to see you sunday and ran you just keep staying in the book i'm telling you you stay in there and take your time you know take your time reading that gospel of john and and just ask god to to give you something every day when you're reading and and god will do that and uh he, he just gives it to us all every day, exactly what we need to, to walk and be honoring to him. And so let's just keep doing that. God bless you guys and have a great weekend. And Lord willing, see you back here on Monday.